Hello and welcome back to the year-end Connextras Veganza. I have for you a very weird video which is going to be a kind of test to see how this might go as a main channel video topic. So I have in front of me three clocks. One is digital, two are analog, and they are slightly different themselves. They all show the same time though, and it has only recently occurred to me that this to me is harder to parse. And I can hear a bunch of you people out there that are just astonished by that fact. And honestly, I was too, until I thought about this a little bit more completely. And this all started thanks to the fact that in the video on photographic printing, I set this clock to 420 because I'm a child. And a lot of people didn't catch it because a lot of people can't read analog clocks these days. Now, don't make fun of them. That's not what I'm trying to do here. Not at all. But in trying to work out why that is, I we seem to be on our way to some sort of wild difference in how we, as individuals, conceptualize time. And so, to preface, to preface why I now know I find this to be more difficult to parse, I have only, you know, thinking back to this, I haven't realized this until I've been going through, I have been losing track of the time a lot lately. Like, not to a point that is problematic or anything, but the day will escape me a lot more than it used to when I, in, in years past. And yes, I don't know if, if this is the reason why, but I have only just realized that I don't have any analog clocks anywhere in my life right now. Uh, the I have only digital clocks and I've stopped wearing a watch. And now that I've gone back and thought through that, I think that explains why I keep losing track of the time. This number, 337, I understand that that is 37 minutes past the hour, but I do not have any sort of internal conception of what 37 minutes past the hour really means. To me, this reads as like a fact. It is 37 minutes past the hour, which is, you know, I am able to go and process that in my head and realize that, yes, there are 23 minutes until four o'clock or 22 if it's going to flip soon. Oh, uh, whatever. But on this clock, I can just look at it and tell what time it is. And I don't have to process this into the time 3.37, 38. And that is the thing that, as I've been thinking through this, is just wild. So I've recorded this out of order how I wanted to say things. So yay me. And you're going to see the continuity move all over the place because, you know, there's three clocks in front of me. But this is the thing that if you haven't realized yet, I'm sorry that nobody's explained it to you. And if you have realized it, good for you. you you're probably nine tenths of the way there to realizing why this is valuable to me. The minute hand is exactly the same as a progress bar. It's a visual indicator of how far you are within the hour. That is why this display has more literal meaning to me of the time than this does. I know that 47 is 47 minutes past the hour because obviously, but I don't have that, um, going in my head and saying that's 13 minutes to the next hour really doesn't mean anything to me. Like I obviously know that there's 13 minutes. I can make that a quantifiable statistic, but that doesn't mean anything to me other than knowing that that's 13 minutes. This, on the other hand, I can see how close we are to the next hour. And that is valuable to me in a way that digital clocks are not. This actually requires more work for me to contextualize distances from one time to another than an analog clock. And connected to that, um, uh, what was I just saying, progress bar analogy, a thing that really clicked for me when I was writing this script and it's in there and who knows if this will get revised. When I was in high school, our classes started and ended at really weird times. 
And um, I think the example I gave, which is probably not even right, but let's say a class went from 9.15 to 10.09, right? So that's 54 minutes. And no, no, that wasn't what I said. I said 9.15 to 10.11, because the classes were 56 minutes, I think. In any case, 9.15 to 10.11, right? I need to do arithmetic in my head to know how many minutes that is. And if I want to work out how many minutes we are into the class, I need to do that arithmetic again. It's not difficult. I know that. But see, with, a, with an analog clock, and this is literally how I process the passage of time in my classes, I would be able to look at the clock, see where the minute hand will be when the class is over, and then track the, process, the progress to that point. And that skill has been baked into my head since, I mean, at least, probably, probably as long as I can remember. Because I know I've been doing this I know watching the clock even in elementary school when we got out at three, watching the, t the hand get closer to the top of the clock. That is how time functions in my head. These numbers are an abstraction of that movement. And I totally get how that will feel super backwards to a lot of people out there. But if you have only ever been looking at analog clocks as a means to show this, but like old-fashionedly, and haven't ever connected or analyzed or uh, in, in other ways processed the value of the hand's movement, I, what does that say? I mean, like, th it's got to say something. You know, they talk about, like, people aren't really visual learners, but, like, well, that... Uh, I've, I've been telling time visually this entire time, and until I, uh, until I stopped having clocks like these around the house, I never really thought of that. It was just the case that this is, um, this is how I see time moving. This, this, I, I can see it counting the numbers up, but that doesn't mean anything to me without actually thinking through, you know, what does five zero mean? And yes, you know, 50, 50 sixtieths. You can make a fraction out of that. You know that it's 10 groups of five. However you want to do it, th there's so many easy ways to do it, and I recognize that. That's not difficult. But I don't have the indication from this thing of the literal indication of closeness to the next hour. And without it, time just makes less sense to me. It, it's always going to be more of a uh, processing task. It's going to take more cognitive work for me to look at a clock like like this, like even say, say I have to go somewhere at 4.15, right? I have to think that, okay, so there's 10 minutes to four and then 15 minutes to four, so 25 minutes. And every single time I'm gonna look at this clock and figure out how much time I have left, I need to do that same comparison. Whereas with an analog clock, I will literally put an imaginary target at 15 and just see how close is the minute hand to that. And I'll be able to see fractionally how much time of the hour remains. And I do have an innate sense of what, how long that's going to take for the minute hand to move. Wild stuff, right? I am able to ascertain an awareness of the time just glancing at an analog clock. And the reason why, and this is, this is something that like, to me, seems like everybody should have picked up on, but it has, been, it has become apparent that this is not the case. The clock represents the hour as a circle, and the minute hand is pointing to where you are on the circle. But see, I think that's a conception that people fixate on and then get stuck. I know this video is all over the place, but here's what I, here's what I mean by that. I am not looking at this clock to read it literally, as in to decipher what this clock says. And I mean decipher as in literally take the glyphs of the clock and turn that into words. That's not what I'm doing when I read a clock like this. I just look at it and I know based on where the minute hand is, not what it is pointing to, but where the minute hand is, what time it is. And when I have explained this to people, their 
I mean, I can't really judge their responses because this has all just been textual communication over Twitter, but there's a lot of people who are just like unable to grok that. I have, but I can't explain it in any other way. That's the, that's what's wild. There is this weird blind spot that I have regarding digital time that other people have regarding analog time. And it's fascinating. The fact that four zero, I know that is two thirds the way through the hour. This clock just plainly shows that the hand is two thirds away around the circle. So that's why when I look at this clock, I'm not translating 240. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just looking at it and saying, oh yeah, we're two thirds of the way around the circle, which means that we're 40 minutes into the hour. But I don't even, I don't even put that two words in my head. I just know that's the time. Oh, wow, see, this is why I'm doing this on Connextras because um, what is this? What is this? I don't even know. This is a wild, wild concept that how do we explore? I mean, this this is not something that we need like a scientific study or psychologists or something on this because it is just so eye-opening to me that the way that I process time is not through the written time or the spoken time. This, this display to me, yes, I can read it, obviously, but the words or the numbers 341 do not have the intrinsic meaning to me that an analog clock does. And for the people that are unable to read analog clocks or find it difficult, the question that I keep coming back to is, are you, like, if, if you think about time as numbers, then I can totally see how this, uh, this feels just really asinine. Like, why would we point, why would we use a little hand to point to the numbers when we have technologies that just display the number. And yeah, great point. But if that's the only way you're thinking about time, if you've never considered, <laughs> come on, stay up. It's literally held up by a knife because it's weighted wrong. Oh, and by the way, uh, I am very sorry that this says the Westminster Clock Company in London. That's terrible. I didn't do it. I do not condone that. Um, but anyway, if, if you are imagining a clock as an indicator of the numbers, like if you process time as numbers first, I can understand how this is, this seems like a really roundabout way to show that time, but I'm not processing it as numbers. And I don't know how to <laughs> like, how can I share that experience with someone? I mean, you can't. You can't get inside my brain. I can't get inside your brain. But what I want to, um, what I want to at least explain to people who may not have realized this is that the graphical, in, the graphical representation of time on a clock, and yeah, I know if you use 24 hour clocks, 12 hour clocks are probably just their own kind of annoying, but the, the, um, the way they display time is in what it looks like, not what it actually, it's so, it's hard to explain. It's not like a, it's not like a speedometer where there could be an arbitrary scale and where the dial is pointing is you then guesstimate what number it actually means. I, I can understand how to some people, like if you're driving a car, you would rather just have the number in front of you. But there's also people who would rather have an analog speedometer because they feel they get a sense of um, change in time. And also like uh, glass cockpits on planes, they always emulate analog instrumentation because you can see the change in time rather than just the discrete value. But um, the thing about clocks specifically is that they always look like this. Aside from weird novelty clocks or the rare 24 hour analog clock, the hands are always gonna do the same thing. They're always gonna be in the same positions to indicate the same time. And the, 
the thing that is, uh, that I can't explain because it's just a thing that I'm so attuned to is that that is what matters. It's not the relationship of the hands to the numbers, although like that helps you understand it, but it's just, where is the hand? That's all I need to see. And uh, also some people will, f I've saw a lot of complaints about like the hour hand is hard to use. Um, yes, I can understand how it's, it's difficult that the hour hand is moving continuously. So it only points at the hour on the hour and then you know, at 3.30, it's halfway between three and four. And right now it's closer to four than three. Um, but I can't, you know, the problem is I, I can tell you why that's not a problem to me. I imagine that entire pie slice as belonging to the previous hour. So it has never been an issue to me that the hour hand is close to four when it's still three o'clock or within the three o'clock hour. Um, so I don't know if that helps anybody, but the other thing is like, I generally just have an awareness of the hour and maybe that's maybe that's something to do with the fact that I prefer analog clocks because I see the minute hand going around and I know that oh an hour has passed without thinking about it. I don't know, but that whole the difficulty with um reading the hour hand is a little weird to me because I don't find it difficult but also I generally know what hour it is. Um Maybe that's unique. I I can't explain that. But, I, and when I say I know what hour it is, I've also said I'm losing track of time. What I mean is that, like, it, it is it is rare for me to have not looked at a clock for so long to have lost track of the hour. Uh, thing, time just kind of creeps up on me. So this really rambly discussion, if it makes any sense to you at all, might turn into a full-on video topic, but I I want to do more research into this. And I, I mean like primary research. I need to figure out a way to um, pull people, maybe using YouTube, uh, or, or I mean, I should also just see if there's been research done on this, because I haven't yet, because I'm just spitting this out here for you to see. But uh, yeah, it is both eye-opening to me that I do not process time as so many people do. But at the same time, now that I know that you, or not you, but the people that have difficulty with analog clocks, um, some of them at least don't even realize the abstraction of the minute hand representing progress through the hour. It's just, just, man, the brain, the human brain, they're all different and we can't experience each other's brains and it's both kind of amazing and a little bit terrifying. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.